They come in all shapes and sizes. And unfortunately, it appears they're all broke. So today, we're gonna take a look at Centrifuge. Coming up next. must be my lucky day because I have all different types of centrifuges and a light source down here for repair. What is going on? Let's take a look and see what's going on with some of these centrifuges. Here you can see I got one broke open. Look at this. The motor mounts are completely gone. But this is an excellent example of a centrifuge. This is a high-speed centrifuge. I think this one goes up to 14,000 RPMs. Normally they go up to about three to 4,000 RPMs, those ones. The smaller ones generally go faster. But this is a pretty good breakdown of what we're gonna look for. We got two solenoids that release the latches on the lid, but notice they also have detect micro switches so when the door lid comes down it hits the switches and it knows that it's ready to run a cycle now centrifuges are all kind of the same they're almost all three phase motors and you can see your motor driver circuit and you got your door detects you can see it's very simple inside. They have a little noise choke right there. This is an important part. This is a braking resistor and they all have this braking resistor in some capacity. Let's see if I got it on this one. Another thing that they almost all have, uh, this guy here has got broken motor mounts. You can see right here, there was a motor mount. So I'm going to replace all three. They're, suspended from these polymer figure eights and eventually it's going to break notice this right here is a four pole magnet which is your tachometer and right here is your hall effect sensor so the hall effect sensor detects how many times a pole of a magnet goes past it so north south north south north south you know so there's four poles on this little round magnet so it knows that it detects your uh, RPMs with this little guy right here. I wanted to pull this motor out so you can get a better look at how it knows its speed. You can see that this one also has a round four pole magnet attached to the rotor shaft. And then down here is your Hall effect sensor. So on centrifuge motors, you always have your power and then you also have your tachometer. Each one of these had some interesting problems. This one right here had motor mounts and I swapped out a main control board with this guy. So I at least have one up and running because my main control board, which is someplace around here, um, it was giving me an error 28 and error 28 is a tachometer problem. So once I checked out the Hall effect sensor and determined that it's good to go, the next best thing would be the control board that reads the tachometer and I installed it back into my centrifuge. You can see this guy here, I'm doing a test after it's done being repaired. And this guy is going to run for over an hour. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a formal RPM reading on it. Before I put it back in service, we're going to test it at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 RPMs. To read the speed on these guys, you can see it's currently running at 2,800 RPMs. We've got a photo tachometer, which shines a light, and it reflects off of a reflective ribbon that's on one piece of the rotor. Almost all centrifuges have an inspection hole where we can place the light. That we got 2800 2800 RPMs. 
too simple. You'll see they all have a semi-clear transparent dome for which we can read the speeds. So we read the speeds either with a photo tachometer or a contact, full contact tachometer, which is this guy right here. It rotates and it'll show you the speed. You actually put this straight on the rotor, which is incredibly dangerous. So we don't actually do that. We almost always do photo tachometer. But that is how we read the speeds and centrifuges. See, I got these little guys with this stat spin right here. Spins incredibly fast. This guy here, come to find out, it's just missing the bolts that hold down the motor, odd enough. Um, mind you guys, I've already wiped down all these items, so um, if I'm not using gloves, that's, that's the only reason at the moment is for this video, because I always wear gloves when working on centrifuges. It's They're absolutely disgusting. You can see right here, I've got other centrifuges and this guy is a special centrifuge it's called a cell washer and it irrigates saline in above the test tubes that are rotating and it allows it to separate components of blood so that's a cell washer it's a centrifuge that you can see a little line for irrigation that goes up into the lid and it sprays directly down on top of the uh, the test tubes so all these guys have been fixed in the last couple days. Then we have to do performance verification, which is what that guy is going through right now. They're going to have to run for at least an hour to make sure that there's no more codes that pop up on these motors, make sure that they're good to go. And then we do a final speed test before we release them to the customer and they're good to go. But that's, uh, that's basically a centrifuge in a nutshell. I guess one of the things that I should point out is that the rotor, which goes that guy, the rotor determines the maximum RPM of the centrifuge. There's always a speed written on top of the rotor. You see right here, it says 14,000 RPM. So this rotor is rated 14,000 RPM, which means the fastest that this guy can go is 14,000 RPM. These guys here have a rotor, I think that's rated at 3,500 or 4,500 RPM. So the fastest that you're supposed to ever take that guy up to is 4,500 RPM. That is it in a nutshell, guys. Man, I haven't touched centrifuges in years, but because of my very recent reassignment, I am now... The centrifuge guy, the laboratory guy, hmm, what do you call me? Anyway, I'm the guy that's going to get them fixed. So thanks for watching, guys. That's centrifuges in a nutshell.